Hey everyone, in this video I'll be going over engine management for the Spitfire. So the first two engine controls we have are these two levers. The big one is the throttle and this little one is the RPM lever. Those are the two most important controls that you're going to use the most. The little RPM lever controls the speed of the propeller and the big throttle lever controls how much gas and air goes in the engine so it kind of controls like the power behind the engine. So if you want to slow down you're going to have to move both of these back and you move both of them forward to speed up. As you adjust the throttle you'll notice that it has its own little gauge here, the boost gauge, which will change. And the RPM lever has its own gauge too, which is obviously the big RPM gauge. Basically, if you're just cruising around, you want to have the RPM around like a little bit past 2500, and you can keep the boost at around plus 4. The maximum continuous setting you can have it on, that you can just keep it on that and not worry about it the whole flight, is the same RPM, a little bit past 2500, and a boost of plus 7. For climbing, the maximum settings is for the RPM around 2800 and for the boost plus 9. And for takeoff, the max setting is 3000 RPM and 12 boost. For combat, you can really run it as high as you want. The boost can go pretty high, even up to like 18. The only thing is to keep in mind is that whenever you're running the boost in RPMs this high, you can only do it for a couple minutes at a time. You can't just cruise at max power or you're going to break your engine. Now you're probably thinking, how in the world am I supposed to remember all these numbers? Well, you don't. In the Spitfire, there's a little placard right here that tells you all the numbers you need to know. In all seriousness though, whenever you're cruising, I would just keep the RPM somewhere between 2500 and 3000, and the boost somewhere between 4 and 8, and in combat, just put them to the max that you want, but only for a couple minutes at a time. Okay, the next engine control we have here is the red lever. This controls the fuel. If you put it forward, it's in run, so basically the fuel will work normally. If you put it backward, it cuts off the fuel to the engine, which is obviously not good, so you want to keep it forward. Okay, the next engine control we have here is the supercharger control. So the supercharger is this thing that makes the engine more powerful, and it has two stages, stage one and stage two. And stage two kicks in when you get to a high altitude. I think it's like 14,000 feet or something. So basically, you want this switch to be an automatic, where it'll automatically switch to stage 2 at like 14,000 feet. The up position, what that's for is, it will always keep it at stage 1. So the up position is, at, is only to be used for if you're at really high altitudes, but you just want to keep the supercharger at stage 1 for some reason. But I would just always leave it in auto. And then there's a light next to it. This light just comes on when stage 2 turns on. Okay, now we have the radiator flaps control. So the radiator flaps are these things right here. They control um, some cooling systems in the engine. So this switch here, if you have it down to on, it basically will manually open the flaps. As you can see, the flaps are opened all the way now. If you have it up to off, off, it says off on the label, but it's actually automatic. Um, basically, the plane will automatically adjust the flaps based on the temperature. I would just leave it in the off or automatic position, which is the up position because if the plane automatically does it for you, I mean, why not? The next thing is the carburetor air control. It's this lever here. If you push it forward, it only lets filtered air into the engine, which is to be used if you're like on really dusty areas or something. And if you put it backwards, it just goes to unfiltered air. In DCS, I'm not sure if it really makes any difference or not. I would just leave it in unfiltered. The last engine control is the fuel pressure switch. So there's this little light right here, and if this light turns on, that means you have low fuel pressure. So you can turn on this thing here, which will increase the pressure of the fuel. The light's not on, so my fuel pressure is fine, so obviously I just want to turn that off. That's all the engine controls. Thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you later.